According to President Bola Atinambu, both borrowings of $8.6 billion and 1 million euro are contained in the 2022 to 2024 external rollout borrowing plans approved by the Federal Executive Council for the immediate past administration of President Muhammadu Buhari. The president said the latest loans have become necessary in the wake of financial crunch and hardship occasioned by fuel subsidy removal. He said the African Development Bank and the World Bank Group have indicated interest to assist Nigeria mitigate the impact with a sum of $1 billion and $1.5 billion. Consequently, the required approval is in the sum of United States dollars eight billion six hundred and ninety nine million five hundred and fifty and uh, for the euro looking at a total of one hundred million euros. Tinumbu said his government hopes to invest the loan in critical infrastructure such as electricity, roads, railway, healthcare services and other key areas to create wealth and employment opportunities in line with his renewed hope agenda. I would like to underscore the fact that the projects and programs in the borrowing plan were selected based on positive technical economic evaluations, as well as the expected contribution to the social economic development of the country, including employment generation, skills acquisition, support towards the emergence of more entrepreneurs, poverty reduction and food security to improve the livelihood in all the 36 states of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory. Considering the huge infrastructural deficit in the country and the enormous financial resources required to fill the gap in funding infrastructure in the face of dwindling financial resources, it has become imperative that we resort to prudent and external borrowing to bridge the financial gap, which would largely be applied to key infrastructure projects. The loan request was referred to send a committee on local and foreign debt to report back in one week. Nigeria's public debt stock, which includes external and domestic debt, stood at 87.38 trillion naira in second quarter of 2023 indicating a growth of 75.27 on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis. The latest request is bound to increase Nigeria's debt profile. Now, you, you, you heard that report and you can tell uh, what's on the ground. Now, I, I thought I was uh, doing well in mathematics, but make me understand because it's, it's like my maths is failing me. Uh, we are now we want to borrow as a nation to fund uh, our lifestyle, uh, a difficult one of that, occasioned by the removal of a fuel subsidy. Uh, talk to us about uh, the logic behind this arithmetic. Well, I, th I think it's important we, under we have a robust conversation around this borrowing. And my intro has always been that borrowing could be good or bad, depending on the position of a country and what the money is spent on. First, when you talk about borrowing, we want to know on what are we spending uh, this money? Is it on capital expenditure or recurrent expenditure? When we look at the, uh, the area of what is presented to the National Assembly, especially to the, uh, to the Senate and, and the House of Representatives, we can clearly decide whether this money is going to capital project or administrative capital or recurrent expenditure. Bad enough, if you have any recurrent expenditure or administrative capital other than core capital expenditure, which will be evident in, in rail, in projects such as road, uh, uh, and so many other capital expenditure, which money borrowed should be spent on. Here is the point. When we talk about borrowing, and what we have done, I, I saw your report. I remember that I spoke with one of your correspondents uh, about six months ago. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's about 11 months now because that was in January. And I said by the end of this year, Nigeria would have done over 70 
trillion naira. My focus was even below estimate, even though the anchor did not believe. Today, we have done over $80 billion in borrowings. What does that mean? Convert that using official exchange rates, then you will know what it means in the real sense of it. The argument has been that what is debt to GDP? For Nigeria, debt to GDP is below 40%, which is, of course, at a manageable level. But in economics, this is called a necessary condition. You cannot take decision on just necessary condition. You need to know what a sufficient condition says. For sufficient condition, economics are bothered about what is debt service to revenue. That is, what is the proportion of your part of your revenue that you are using to service debt? Not my word. A couple of weeks back, the minister, the incumbent minister of finance says 98 percent, and you need to listen to that very carefully. 98 percent. That is 98 out of 100. That is of every 100 naira Nigeria generates, we spend 98 naira not to buy cars, not for capital projects, not for the current expenditure, but to service loans. 98%. We are left with 2% to do so many other things. And that is why I said that by 2025, I haven't read IMF staff report that says that by 2025, which I corroborated, by the way, that Nigeria may need to borrow to service debt. We need to depart from patterns of borrowings. And I know that that will come from revenue and become more innovative and also to cut costs. And, and I will get to exactly that. I don't know I mean, I how much time uh, I have before I get into that. Yes, and that's exactly where I want to jump in. Because the same finance minister, Wale Adun, only a few days ago actually said, look, Nigeria cannot continue uh, to rely on borrowing to you know, uh, fund her budget, including, of course, 2024 uh, budget. So how, what are the options, really? How can Nigeria begin to address you know, her deficit uh, you know, financing? Well, uh, it, it's, it's surprising that in the reality of borrowing, we decided to cut a check of 168 million, not just one, but in multiples and in hundreds of it to import vehicles that we can have it, that we have in Nigeria, that we can even have a payment structure for a local producer. But because we say it is constituency, it's for official reasons. I think for official reasons, those that are legislature should even be talking about buses, not having exotic cars, because I believe each of them can afford those vehicles. So if we truly love Nigeria at this critical moment, we should not put our finances under pressure, because it's already under pressure. That's one. Two, so, so, so to, to, to elaborate on one, cut, cutting costs for executive and for legislature, especially those two arms of government. We need to do a drastic review and spend only on necessity. This is what Nigerians are taking as decision. If you want to go and visit a friend that is not necessary, you will not need to be to be to be cajoled in not, uh, Paul, not I, to go. If it I is the cost quickly. of transport yeah. that will tell you not to go. Secondly, secondly, Paul, Paul, secondly, so secondly, secondly the important thing is we, Right. I mean, these points have actually been made over and over again. The argument the president is making, and we also heard from the president of the Senate there, uh, Gozul Akwabio, say, look, Nigeria has a huge infrastructure deficit. Mm -hmm. In fact, some say in the next uh, 30 years, Nigeria needs about 100 billion to uh, 150 billion annually uh, to you know, close the infrastructure uh, gap. So, correct, we need... We need yeah, we need over a hundred billion in, uh, to close infrastructural gap. Well, how will it come? Are we going to borrow that hundred billion infrastructure gap and borrow money to service that hundred billion infrastructure? That is, of course, a, a, a journey of no return. How do we cut costs? Number one. Number two. How do we generate more revenue? And this revenue will not come from traditional tax regime. It will come from innovative way of getting revenue from this economy. This economy has a GDP without uh, rebasing, as, as we are now, a GDP of close to $500 billion. We cannot, at all levels of government, be generating in revenue between 10 to 12 percent and hope that will be a better day ahead. We need to look beyond having the normal, the traditional revenue generation. And I'm happy that, of course, the president have set up a fiscal policy team that, of course, had cuts across all sectors. The report will be held, and I believe in the competence of individuals that are members of that team to give useful quality advice to government as to what are the alternative
negative sources without necessarily increasing tax rates as we have it today. Because that in itself, when an economy is going through difficult challenges and you increase tax rates, you are only telling people that they should even buy a stiffer belt to tight not just their, their, their waist, perhaps to tight their road. So, and I'm happy the chairman of that committee have said, no, they are not increasing tax rates, which is the right thing to do. But looking at alternative revenue sources. For alternative revenue sources, Nigerian federal government can have 20 trillion naira in revenue if we are willing to collect such money. And for subnationals, I'm talking about state and the FCT, they can add a minimum of 25 to 30 trillion naira right. in revenue. This is what our energy should be channeled on. And all this revenue, 100%, not should go to the current expenditure, not should go into political servicing, it should go directly into capital expenditure to bring our people out of poverty, deprivation, and penury. Uh, thank you, Paul. Now, now th this issue of borrowing is very saddening, and it's more serious than uh, most people think. Because uh, if you look at um, the impact on our foreign reserves, it's beginning to look like a vicious cycle. Because it's going to the borrowing, the 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 amount, the size of our borrowings will impact the uh, foreign reserves, and then it will have another effect on uh, balance of trade, balance of payments, which is now trickled down on our standard of living yet again. How can we uh, find our way out of this vicious cycle? Well, I'll, I'll tell you perhaps one of the benefits of foreign loans is that when it comes for Nigeria that is challenged with hard currency, such money goes to CBN. CBN now stays in a better position. Although not in the real sense, stays in better position to defend the Naira if that must be done. So these have been the reason why Central Bank as an organization over the years have always supported government in borrowing hard currency because it will boost their foreign reserve, then release Naira equivalent to government. So it's important we put that in the mix to play the devil's advocate. But at the end of the day, the real cost of borrowing is that we are borrowed in hard currency. We have to pay back in hard currency. I completed a research where I investigated the relationship between uh, the effect of foreign debt on the economy of Nigeria. And I can tell you that after run analysis and using so many economic, uh, econometrics method, 87% negative impact. It has 87% negative impact on this economy. Now, here is what you should believe, which is, it, which is where economy anchors argument on borrowing. Economy will say, what is the impact of loan? We expect that 10% of impact should be directly on the economy, and it should even be more for developing country. But what we have seen is that the economy over the last 10 years had hardly grown by 2%, but our borrowings has grown by over 25%. Therefore, there are still leakages even in the money borrowed. That is, there are money that are borrowed that rather than impacting the economy directly, they yeah. have gone to individual pockets or people's bank account rather than impacting the economy to grow. So I am hopeful that the new administration will take a different turn from what we have seen perhaps in the last eight to ten years in our economy. Very quickly, before we let you go, Paul Alaji, how hopeful are you that the budget assumptions for 2024 uh, will actually deliver on the promise? And of course, uh, we heard from Wale Adun saying, look, uh, for Nigeria to fund her budget appropriately, you need to spend, spend, spend on infrastructure. Do you agree with that position? Well, I agree with uh, Mr. Wale Adun 100%. Spending on infrastructure is the way to go. What Mr. Wale Adun must also guarantee is how will this money come at zero cost to Nigeria. Unfortunately, it appears from the body language of government that this will come at some cost to government. Uh, returns will come in hard currency. Naira is susceptible to devaluation. All of these are the payments that perhaps not children are born. Children are already born. In the next five to 10 years, we have to pay, as soon as they leave university, uh, that we have to pay back because of decisions we are taking today. So there are parameters. I've seen what exchange assumption is at about between seven or eight hundred. But when you look at what exchange today is, is today at official window, are we truly saying that that is what we have estimate in terms of what we can get in crude oil? You know, how can we stop those who are stealing our crude so that the benefits can go directly to us as an economy and we can be liberated in terms of our economy? And at the end of the day, we will be proud to be Nigerians. Many more conversations. 
administration mm. to come, maybe in the yeah. coming period. No Eventually, doubt. when the president leaves, that budget, of course, anything can change overnight. Right. But let's really see what is presented. Then at that time, we can have a robust conversation on the budget and see what the way for. You interviewed me, I remember, when President Buhari presented his last budget. Yes. And I mentioned to you that that budget will not achieve much, not because I hope for it. And even the gentleman that joined us from another location said the same thing. Today, we have seen what has 2023 budget achieved for us as an economy. We are even applied for supplementary budgets in mm -hmm. spite of the huge amount of money that government voted in it. Yeah. Because they said when the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Economic fundamental must come first and economic transformation must follow next. If right. not, it will become economic voodoo, which of course we <laughs> hope that will not continue in our country as we have it today.